Hi everyone, Dmitry here. Today I'm going to show you how to enrich your prototypes by adding bindings to them. Bindings is a very powerful tool that adds custom object transformation that is triggered by user's interaction with other elements in your prototype. There are a lot of examples that utilize this technique. I'm sure you saw them somewhere and thought, wow, that's cool. I wonder if it's difficult to do. Well, no, it's easier than you'd think. Let's jump into our tutorial so you can see for yourself. I'm going to create a nice little mobile app that will show us an image and a scrollable description text and a back to top button. So basically I created my layout in Photoshop and saved it as a PSD file, which I will upload with this video. All I need to do is to resize my artboard to 720 by 1280 pixels, import my PSD, correct some objects placement, create the background for my prototype, make it grey. And one more thing, I will duplicate the background and make the new object 230 pixels high and rename it to something like BG Overlap. It will come handy later on. Next, create some text for scrolling. I've took the source from Wikipedia, but you can find it in the description under this video. I'll change the font to Roboto, size to 25 and the line spacing to 1 and 1. Resize the text area so all of it is visible. Put it into a group, resize the group's bounding box like I did and apply the vertical scroll behavior to it. Let's see how it works. Not bad, but let's add some sweet bindings. Click on the group and hit the edit bindings button. The binding editor pops up. Now, unlike the animation editor, bindings are not time dependent. They rely on the position of the parent object and transform it to the child properties. As you can see, I got my position indicator here. It resembles our scroll current position. Imagine it like a timeline, but with pixels instead of frames. So if I want an object to react to this position, all I need is to select it and apply some transformation to it. So I'll move my position indicator to plus 150 pixels, pick my flamingo image, scale it a bit. As you can see now, I got a bunch of keyframes created that resemble its transformation. Also, move the image to the top. Great. Now I'll position the header, move the gradient layer to the edge of the flamingo's image. There we go. Now I want the image to start disappearing after we scroll through 150 pixels. So in this 150 pixels mark, I'll create a keyframe for the opacity by clicking on the image and clicking on the empty layer here and select opacity from the list. Move the position indicator to 200 pixels and change the opacity of the image to 0. Great. Now I'm going to scroll to 400 pixels and move the header up somewhere here. Pick my gradient layer and move it to the top as well under the header. Nice. Let's see what we got so far. We have a nice scrolling text and a scaling picture that disappears when we scroll to the middle of our text. That's the end of our... Just kidding. We're halfway there. Now let's add some animation to the opposite scrolling direction. Move the indicator to minus 100 pixels. Move my header closer to the text. Select our image and scale it up a bit. Now select the gradient layer and move it to the edge of the image. Everything looks good. Let's see how the image reacts to the scroll now. Scroll up. Good. Scroll down. Now it's way cooler than it was before. I'm going to add some offset to the header so it will look more elastic. Go to minus 150 pixels, select the header and move it down a little. Okay, now let's take a look. Better, definitely better. Now let's punch in more interaction to our prototype by adding a back to top button. Create a rectangle with some radius applied to it. Create a text that says back to top. Select those two elements, hit S and give your symbol a proper name. Now enter the symbol, duplicate the artboard and change the background of the button. Also select both of the artboards and switch on the interactable option. Next create an hover in and hover out actions as I did there. Now we'll have a button with a hover functionality. Take your button and place it under the footer. Now I want the button to appear when the scrolling is finished. So I'll just move my indicator to this dotted line that resembles the end of the scroll. Get back a few frames to make the starting keyframe. Select my button from the layers window and click on the empty line with the button name on it in the bindings panel and create a keyframe for the Y. Now move to the end of the scroll 
and with our button selected, just move the button up. There you go. Close our bendings editor, let's see what we got. Scrolling down, and there's our little button. Now let's make the button work. Here's a tricky way to do that, so pay attention. Duplicate your artboard. On your new artboard, disable the vertical scroll on the text, select static from the list, go to the first artboard, select your button and create the click action. Drag it to the second artboard, select your second artboard and create an auto action and drag it to the first artboard. Let's test it out. Yeah, just like a charm. For your information, the auto action is triggered whenever you enter an artboard. So basically what I just did is created a static version of the first artboard. Since mockup creates a seamless transition between my artboards, so by clicking on the button, I immediately return to the state with no bindings applied. And right after that, I jump onto the artboard where my bindings begin to work again. A nice trick, but it does its magic. Now we have a cool prototype with awesome interactive effects that were achieved by using bindings. I hope you had a great time while working in mockup. Stick around, there's another tutorial coming up about symbols and their key role in creating even more awesome prototypes. Cheers!